Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Again, we say Happy New Year. That is the second edition of your regular program this year, The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Ours is to raise the issues, and yours is to join us in creating awareness about them. So together, we all can advocate for a better society. And like we say here, the issues are no hold bar. Today, I'm discussing insecurity, and I'm requesting the government to put words into action, rather than the consistent presidential vow to deal with same. Rukewe, a women rights advocate, is not discussing just women today, but an issue that's a bone in all our necks, but largely neglected mental health issues. Chuka, who is ever ready to come to the rescue, is true to type as always. Today, he's wondering why government should borrow money from her people when public funds are consistently allegedly stolen. You'll hear him on that. Our first lady, treasure, is no one to be left out as she lashes out at our politicians for placing personal interest above national interest. One of our regulars, Seidu, who is fresh from Niger, is admonishing us to be prudent this year, 2021, as the financial figures are not looking too good. I guess you don't need an engineer turned accountant like Seidu to tell you that the signs are very visible. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back if you stay. Broken promises are worse than lies because you make others hope for something you can't give. Hence the saying, your words mean nothing when your actions are the complete opposite. It's security and the president's many vows. President Muhammadu Buhari in his 2021 New Year address to Nigeria again vowed to tackle the multifaceted problems of the country, particularly poor economy, corruption and insecurity. These were the same promises the president made at his inaugural address on Friday, the 29th of May, 2015, when he emphasized that effort would be intensified to rescue the Chibo girls and every other person in captivity of Boko Haram then. How much of these promises were kept? The answer, my friend, is in another promise made by the president almost a year after, when he promised to put an end to the issue of suicide bombers, stating that Boko Haram had been decimated by his government and that the suicide bombers were only after soft targets. Again in November 2017, during a separate courtesy visit by Christians and Muslim leaders at the State House, led by Reverend Samson Ayokule and Dr. Khalid Aliyu, the president vowed to address the rising concerns of insecurity and corruption in the country. Also in 2018, the president vowed with a renewed pledge to tackle insecurity in various parts of Nigeria, following bandit attack on resident of Goronyo local government area of Sokoto State, where 27 persons allegedly lost their lives. I don't want to remember the many vows made by the government to tackle insecurity after the various attacks in Kaduna State, including Gona Rogo and Mayali in Idon Ward of Kajure local government area. Or is it the, the beheading of farmers in Boronu or kidnapping in Kasina? Also, speaking at the graduation ceremony of course 27 of the National Defense College, the president once again vowed to tackle terrorism, insurgency, and national security. I think these vows are now one too many without commensurate actions. Anyway, within I know self. Presently, one would need the blood of Jesus to travel by road from Benin to Lagos. You would require your tesbih, chaplet, rosary, Quran, and the Bible to, to embark on a journey from Benin to Abuja through Auchi, Okene, and Lokoja. The story is the same in most parts of the country as kidnapping 
an armed banditry are now the twin pillar of our daily occurrence along these highways. At each of such attacks, the president will vow to tackle the insecurity. The security agencies will ask us to go about our normal duties as they are on top of the situation. And soon, another one will happen, and there will be another vow. When will the government be tired of vows and put words to action? Well, yet the president's supporters believe he had fared far better in tackling this security problem in Nigeria than any other government. But you, what are your thoughts? I would therefore advocate, as advised by Professor Wale Shoinka and other well-meaning Nigerians, including the Borno State Governor and Northern Elders, if we have to pay people to come help us, call them whatever you want, we should go ahead and cry out or hire hands to help us as we have gone past the stage of desperation or pretending to be on top of a situation that is way above us. Because this security problem in the country is now a national phenomenon with citizens dying carelessly either in the hands of kidnappers, armed bandits, terrorists, militants, hired assassins, or even armed robbers with no commensurate respite or hope of improvement from the government apart from presidential vows and promises. Need I not say that it has become visible to the blind and audible to the deaf that either the government has run out of idea or they don't appreciate the enormity of the menace that should require drastic action rather than vows. Even if we have to restructure our security apparatus by introducing states, local government, police, and vigilante, let there also be a general mobilization in which farmers, especially, are trained to protect their lives, their harvest, and the people around them. After all, if we all travel safely through our roads, sleep with our eyes closed, and go to farms not afraid of being killed, it's the president that will take credit for the attendant safe country and not those that came to assist him. I'll be waiting, you think. Happy New Year. I don't see anything about insecurity that you have said that has not been amplified in, in many places already in Nigeria. We're just tired of talking. As you've said in your advocacy, um, Liv, it's promises, open promises, and that's why a lot of us didn't wake up early on January 1st to listen to the president, <laughs> because he's saying the same thing without action. What we need is visible progress, growth, that what the president has, has promised has been done. And then... What we see is that when you, when you criticize or you draw attention to some of these things that are, some of these vows, some people in the garb of religion begin to say, for example, for Bishop Kuka, that he should, he, should, he should just get out of the north. It's just so unpleasant, so not nice for a nation. You know what Livos was saying about um, these vows that are never kept? It's true that we can't travel by road in Nigeria, it's really scary. Apart from the bad roads where you have these huge portals where you can have an accident, you die because there's no help coming. These um, portals are traps for those bandits to come and in all those spots. Right. And then where is the security? You, we all know where the bad roads are. Where's the police um, when, when uh, you know, securing those spots where you can fix the roads? You know, and then of course, you know, suicide bombers. We have satellites, we have intelligence. It was, um, was it um, Bola Hong was saying how they rescued one American yeah. Within yeah. 24 hours or so, one person and hundreds of people are kidnapped and we have no idea where they go or where they are. I mean, it's, it's really getting ridiculous. And, 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 and you then know? when you I mean, when you talk and criticize, some people wake up and say, why are you criticizing yeah, Shilba? Yeah, you're making and, into religious and things. And and I think all lives of Nigerians are lives of Nigerians, I, I so we really need to do something. The truth is, it seems to me like um, we have some sacred cows within the government. It's about time that our government, you know, would uh, evaluate what has been working for them. Uh, in business, you know, from time to time, you evaluate yourself. You, you want to see what is working, what you need to continue doing and what you must stop doing. Uh, I think it's about time that uh, Mr. President re-examine his cabinet and expunge those people that are not performing. The dead wounds. You know, uh, it's, oh. it's very important Lord. because insecurity is it's at its peak. That's a you know, um, the um, poverty level, it's, it's at an alarming rate. You know, um, I've always supported this government, but I mean, when it's time to tell the truth, the truth you know, we need to like face it. They've not done very well. It need uh, a lot still needs to be done. So I'm hopeful 
that we still have three years. They could still do a whole lot. But it's time ah, to... Well, we still have ah. three years. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a scary talk. Chuka, no, where are you? Know. Know. Oh. That's like a death sentence <laughs> to me right now. You know, I think a lot can still be done. Part of, part of what our problem is, is that, um, you know, when you take over power, you can make promises because you've only just started. Buhari actually is not aware that he's been there for five years. So it's so funny. He looks like a comedian when he keeps oh. saying, I will flush those people out. I vow that we will pay money to get the trains running. I vow that we will get something happening. Now he's a complete joke. You know what I mean? Where we, I'm just, you know, when I watch him, I laugh. When he was talking about NSAS, I was laughing throughout, you know? He's a joke. And that's very sad because... If he had done even a little bit in the last five years, we will take it whenever he says, I will do something that he actually means to do it. Right now, there's not going to be any security because he's not going to do it. He cannot do it. And he's just joking. The thing no, is, I don't know if anyone I, sees I that. I disagree with Chuka. Um, we still have time to uh, review what, where the mistakes are, we can still fix it. Yeah, but that's when we you have a listening government well, say you. Where's your plan? What, what, what that's when you have a do? listening no. government no. rather than a reactive she government. Saying, what you yes. guys are saying is that, it's not that uh, there is no time, but looking at the it's antecedents, five years and looking at the happened. antecedent, if you didn't do anything for five years, it means that uh, three, three years, years. What do you want? And, and that the body language, from what you also admitted, the, the attitude of the president is that all is well. Gabashu said it recently. And the attitude that the of people we are like not seeing, We are not seeing what the president is seeing in these people while he still retain them. The service chiefs. So if only yeah, the president sees good in the service chiefs who have failed us woefully. Woefully. Just as you said, Saidu, insecurities, insecurities that it's highest the lowest highest highest. whichever it's mm -hmm. horrible <laughs> the highest. Everything is nigerians highest. are impoverished every day it looks like when we wake up on, on, a, on a good day the government has one more policy to make us poorer <laughs> crazy. It's crazy crazy insecurity can cause mental health problems if not addressed i'm next after the break